This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Jack Threads. Coming up on Destructoid, World of PandaCraft gets a release date, and some pandas, Fall of Cybertron lets you build your own transformers, and Dead Space 3 has dungeons and a crafting system. What is this demonry? Find out right now on Destructoid. Welcome to Destructoid, I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville. Happy Wednesday, Max. Happy Wednesday, Tara. You look more slender. Thank you. I've been doing my cheek exercises and growing a ferocious beard so as that it doesn't look like I have big cheeks because I had my wisdom teeth pulled I out see last that. week. Patches. Um, yeah, if you guys caught Monday's show, you might have noticed that I sounded stupider than usual and had puffier cheeks than usual. And my face still hurts, but my cheeks are slowly returning to normal. Though during lunch today I ate some chicken and I'm pretty sure some of it went into my brain because I suck at eating food. Would some news about pandas make you that feel any better? That might possibly help Because I do have some actually. Spit it out, woman! Myths of Pandaria got a release date today. Uh, this is of course the fourth World of Warcraft expansion that was announced at last year's BlizzCon. Haven't really heard much about it since, uh, but we now know it's going to be coming out on September 25th, 2012. Pre-orders have already opened up for the standard digital version, which comes with only the game and is priced at $39.99, uh, as well as the digital deluxe version, which is $59.99 and includes the game, as well as an Imperial Quillen flying mount, the Lucky Quillen cub pet, an exclusive Diablo 3 banner sigil and accent, and two exclusive StarCraft II portraits. Last but not least, for those of you who like to own things in 3D, or yeah, I guess that is technically correct. Uh, there's going to be a $79.99 Collector's Edition, which includes all of the aforementioned items, plus a soundtrack, a behind-the-scenes DVD and Blu-ray, an art book, and a Chen, Chen Storm Stout mouse pad. So, there you go, panda lovers. Yeah, I remember when this got announced back at BlizzCon, reactions were kind of mixed, um, but they've had the beta going on for quite a few months now. Has that changed anyone's minds out there? Is this going to drag you back into WoW? Let us know in the comments. Can Thank you right. handle the pandas? The panda? Pandemonium? The panda? Anyway, let's let's not go down that we road. We already expired all of yeah. our puns. Okay, uh, I got some new ones though for Transformers Fall of Cybertron, which is looking at a late August release, which makes the title completely misleading because they could have called it Transformers Summer of Cybertron. Hold for laughs. <sighs> anyway, we've got our first full gameplay trailer for the multiplayer side of High Moon Studios' follow-up to Transformers War for Cybertron, which, if you're unfamiliar, is a game about a bunch of robots in outer space fighting and turning into things that sort of look like cars and airplanes, though they're not exactly cars and airplanes because they're on an alien planet. We'll get a few glimpses of some of the ten big Cybertronian multiplayer battle maps and a shot of the co-op ex escalation mode, but the really cool part of this is some footage of the Create Your Own Transformer mode thing, which is where you can create your own transformer. That's right, guys. You can design your own bots That's to use cool. in multiplayer. So if any of you guys are looking for good transformer names for use over the internet, I have prepared a short list of suggestions for your online multiplayer transformers. <clears throat> Clout, hmm. LinkedIn, Tumblr, TurboTax, FuelBand, Dropbox, RapidShare, and of course their leader, Amazon Prime. Destructoid. I just went through like trends Valtrex. on Twitter. Valtrex. Yes. There's so many. Pretty much any drug name would yep. work. Ephemeral. I just made that one up. Anyway, uh, Transformers Fall of Cybertron comes out on August 21st in North America and August 24th in Europe. And in case you guys don't know, this is being made by High Moon, who are the same guys who are working on the new Deadpool game, which makes me... Um, I, I, is it shallow of me to want to pick this up just to get a hint of what you know we're looking at for for the Deadpool game? Not at all. I played the first one. It's pretty good. It's definitely I would say probably the best Transformers mm -hmm. game I've played. If there's one video game that Mr. Destructoid should be making an appearance in, it's Transformers. Yep. Like really, Destructoid name? He's a robot. It High just Moon makes sense. Studios, get this robot get in on your that. Transformers game, please. Thank you. And then we will review you 10 plus. Ace. Mm, 11 out of 8. <laughs> Okay, moving on. So last week I had the privilege of traveling down to EA's offices to get my first ever hands-on experience with Dead Space 3, and the focus of my demo was on the addition of optional missions, which are basically like dungeons in any other open world game. Space um, dungeons. Space dungeons, if you will. Uh, now the part that we played was one of the optional missions in the first act of the game that's set in an area called the Lost Flotilla, which is basically just an area of space right above Tau Volantis that has a bunch of old wrecked ships 
ships and debris floating everywhere. So it's kind of cool. Typically, you'd be able to uh, use zero G to navigate around the Lost Flotilla, but unfortunately, we were restric restricted to the inside of the ship, and we didn't really even play long enough to get a good idea of the story. We were just kind of exploring the ship and killing any necromorphs that happened to get in our way. Uh, but our demo was about 20 minutes, and I think they said dungeons are usually around 45 minutes to an hour, but like I said, totally optional. You can skip all of them if you want to just breeze through the story. You can do a um, single player co-op, although there are going to be uh, certain optional missions that will only be playable in co-op, and those will tie back into John Carver's backstory somehow. So. Um, there's that. As far as gameplay goes, a lot of you have asked if the game kind of feels like every other third-person cover-based shooter now that it's like kind of looking more action-oriented. Um, and based on what I've seen, that is true for certain parts of the game, specifically the part where you're only fighting humans. And it's very much not true when you're fighting necromorphs and necromorphs and humans together. Because necromorphs are all over the place. You can't really just take cover there and like be okay. You'll have to move three seconds later. Um, and then you, there are parts where a human will die and a necromorph will take over their body and like transform. And that's, that's like, gross. that's when a lot of the strategy comes into the game. Also. This is really interesting. There is a weapon crafting system now, totally new to the hmm. series. Um, they're actually not revealing any details about that until next month, uh, so they only let us peek at it for like five seconds, uh, but it does let you merge weapons to create super powerful ones. Um, Hamza was was with me during my demo, and he, uh, he made a, uh, or they showed him a line gun with an alternative fire ripper chainsaw gun. Hmm. So it was like kind of badass. Um, and then of course we also encountered some, some simple puzzles while we were playing. Uh, of course there's really obvious stuff like using telekinesis to uh, open a bunch of broken doors. Um, and there's also ones that were a little bit trickier and involved having to flip switches on a circuit breaker. I wish we had footage of this, I really do. Um, it probably means nothing just hearing me talk Anybody about it. Anybody who says this game isn't scary enough has never had to go downstairs into the basement when the power is out and flip the switches Trust on a circuit me, breaker. Trust me, the scariness Spooky. is not going to be an issue in this game. It's quite scary. I really enjoyed my hands-on. Um, I, I wish I could have seen more, like I said, it was only 20 minutes. Um, but if you guys want more info, you should check out my interview with the game's executive director, Steve Papoutsis. Um, that should be up on this channel now or very soon. And of course, Hamza Aziz wrote up a preview also, which you can find over on destructoid.com. Hmm, interesting good. game. You know what is else an also interesting game that we can talk about? Sleeping dogs. Oh, the, the last that is look at them, they're so asleep right there. Oh, that's so cute. We put so many animals in these pictures this week. Um, Okay, so last time we talked about Sleeping Dogs, we were talking about the voice cast, and though it does have a very nice star-studded cast, that is probably the least exciting part of this game. Today, Square Enix dropped a great gameplay video of one of the missions in the game where you, Wei Shen, are sent by old lady restaurant owner Mrs. Chu to track down Ratface Johnny, who is responsible for a close friend's murder. And also, he's a, he's a rat face. Just That's look at him. That's racist. He's a little jerk, dirt bag. Um, so the video gives us a closer look at the gunplay, melee combat, and driving, and how they sort of all fit together and they can be intermingled uh, here and there. I think the I think the coolest part is when they were utilizing the gunplay while driving. This isn't the first time this has been done in a sandbox game, but uh, when you're doing it in Sleeping Dogs, when you pull out a gun while on a motorcycle, uh, it actually goes into slow-mo bullet time, so it's easier to shoot out dudes' tires while you're doing 80 miles an hour on the freeway. Yeah, that's helpful. And yeah, and doing so will actually cause vehicles to go like flipping into midair in slow motion while people fall out of them and fly all over the road, which is probably not realistic, but it is really, really cool. So let's let's be in support of that. We also get to see some of the action hijacking, which is when you jump from one moving vehicle to another and then hijack it by using action, as the name would suggest. And of course, there's also a mini game where you use a cell phone signal to triangulate Johnny Ratface's location. Mm -hmm. But I will be honest, the part where you jump out of the car into the other car looks more interesting than that. Uh, definitely go check out the full demo on the Sleeping Dogs YouTube channel and, uh, and try not to let the narrator turn you into a sleeping dog. Because seriously, the guy has a very boring voice. And I'm not <laughs> trying to be mean, it's just, it's an exciting game. You could have more energy when you talk about it. Anyway, Sleeping Dogs comes out for PS3, 360, and PC on August 18th stateside and everywhere else sometime around then. I'm looking forward so to check, that one. Check your local listings. Yeah, that's going to be a fun Triangulating one. Triangulating people's locations using a cell phone. That Much is like, like watchdogs. Hmm? Conspiracy? Dogs the game! Let's take a word from our sponsor. Let's do that. Okay, people are always asking me, Max, how do you do your hair? No and my answer that. is, get out of here and stop trying to steal all my secrets. Other times people ask me, Max, where did you get that jacket? And most of the time my answer is jack threads because that's where three out of my four jackets came from. 
Jack Threads is a members-only shopping club for esteemed and fashionable gentlemen where you can score premium brands at up to 80% off every day. Everything from sick board shorts and Narkill high tops for hanging out in, to fancy blazers and elegant neckties to wear on dates with ladies. Jack Threads has you covered. If you're not into clothes, Jack Threads also has a bunch of other accessories like sunglasses and watches, as well as weird accoutrements like this cocktail shaker that looks like a spray can, or perhaps this 50 caliber ammo container for putting whatever you want in. Maybe bullets, who knows? Normally there is a wait list to join, but if you go to jackthreads.com slash destruct, you get instant access today. There's no obligation to buy anything. It's free to sign up, and every time someone signs up, it helps support the show. So please go sign up, and I can afford to have more painful operations on my mouth. Again, that is jackthreads.com slash destruct. Yes. Hey, speaking of clothes, you know who needs some clothes? Me. Your avatar. Oh, no, that's yeah. no folks. I'm not talking about the last airbender or those blue space cats who are always having ponytail sex. I'm talking about those cute little shits on Xbox Live, those little little dancing men. Oh on yes. There. Um, and now you can get official virtual destructoid merch for your Xbox Live that's avatars. That's right. Uh, for sale, we've got a variety of clothing options ranging from wristbands to t-shirts to hoodies to hats. Even a varsity jacket, so you can trick the girls into thinking you play sports. I would totally wear a real-life one of those. Totally just, clever. Just gonna say that. Uh, there's both men's and women's sizes in there, so no discrimination if you have a female avatar. Um, and the clothing items range from 80 to 160 Microsoft points. So, but I think it's a good way to get rid of those troll points you always have left over. I've got like such a, I've got like four, like 189 or something weird. I don't know how that even happened. I don't know, um, you something for one Microsoft point. Yeah. <laughs> Also, PlayStation users, we have not forgotten about you. There are both men's and women's shirts available for your PlayStation Home character, and you can use this code to redeem your free one. It's totally free. And we actually have those shirts in real life. I don't know if we sell them anymore, but I have one somewhere Mine shrunk, in my so house. I gave it to my friend, but I'll probably get another one some, someday. Yeah. I like how the girl's shirt looks like her, her boobs or eyes. Oh, I never noticed that. It's creepy. It doesn't look that way when I wear it, but... Oh, yeah, wow, totally. You could just cut this right there and have pupils. Okay, never mind. this is getting weird. On that note, uh, that is all the time we have for today. We are going to be back here on Friday for another one of our live shows. Oh. That is happening at 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. Of course, it's right here at youtube.com slash gtoid. Or if your work blocks YouTube or something, you can check it out at rev. 3.com slash watch, or is it revision3.com slash watch? Try both. Um, and of course, we're on Twitter also. You are Max Scoville, I am Tara Long, and together we are the Detoid Show. Longest. Sorry, I'm Tara Longest. I totally forgot. You're the Tara sickness Bull is invading is my are. brain. Hey! Oh, Jesus. Anyway, uh, go get a sexy Destructoid shirt for your little virtual people, and we will be back here on Friday. I hope you guys have a lovely evening. Take it easy.